In the beginning, after God created humanity, he created witches who he shared his power with, telling them to guide the humans in his place. The witches were dedicated in their role, but after thousands of years, the humans ended up despising them and hunting them down. We meet a witch named Morgan and her young apprentice Adonis. They appear to be lost in the desert as Morgan looks at her map. She struggles to find where they are, but Adonis just opens up his Google Maps. Morgan warns him against using his strange device as we learn they are being hunted, but Adonis tells her that it's just a phone that he made himself. He explains that it runs on summoning magic, which replaces the need for radio waves, so even the army's technology can't track them. Adonis calls his master lame for still using a paper map in their day and age, but Morgan ends up teaching him a lesson. She tells him to stop sulking, but Adonis thinks about why they need to keep running. Morgan explains that it's just how she has to live, since people's attitudes towards witches have changed. All she can do is try to blend in in the cities, saying she's more like a ninja rather than a witch. The two are looking for a place that's more tolerant towards witches so that they can live in peace. Morgan thinks they'll need to find a place with a school for Adonis, but Adonis says he just wants to keep learning from her. Morgan makes fun of him for liking older women, and the two continue on their way. But at that moment, they are found by a squad of soldiers. Adonis wants to handle them, but Morgan tells him he's still too inexperienced. She uses her ice magic, summoning her staff, and she prepares to fight. Meanwhile in the Empire of Redia, we see the Emperor Goeth, as he receives a report about their failed attempt at catching Morgan. The man is beaten for his incompetence, and the Emperor demands that they catch her at all costs. We see that Morgan has defeated all the men, and she tells Adonis that it's time to go, but Adonis wonders why she won't let him fight, thinking he could have handled the soldiers. He summons an enormous sword to prove his point, but Morgan tells him once again that he's still too inexperienced. However, Adonis thinks that the real reason is because he is a human himself, and she doesn't want him to kill his own kind. But he says he doesn't care about that, saying he just wants to be able to protect her. Morgan is touched by his words, and she acknowledges his feelings, but at that moment, one of the soldier's devices activates, transmitting their location. The ground suddenly starts to shake, and the two are surrounded by a green light. They are shocked by what's going on, but they manage to stick together, as they are teleported away. We see the Emperor addressing his people. He talks about how they used to rely on witches for knowledge and their protection, but he thinks it's absurd that they must always be inferior to them. Thanks to their countless developments in technology, they have become strong, so he declares that it's their time to eradicate the witches and establish themselves as the rulers of the world. The people cheer for him, and at that moment, Morgan and Adonis suddenly appear. They are shocked at their situation, and they recognize they are in front of the Emperor. Adonis rushes forward, as he tries to buy time for his master to run, but he ends up being restrained. Morgan tells them to let him go, as she threatens to kill everyone around. The Emperor is unfazed by her threat, so Morgan starts preparing her spell. She notes that she didn't want to fight them, because she wanted Adonis to have a home he could return to. She is about to activate her spell, but her magic suddenly shatters. She can't believe what's happening, and the Emperor tells her she has no idea of the level their science has advanced to. We see a device underground that is stopping her magic, and all the people laugh at her. Adonis tries to use his magic, but his power is also gone. The Emperor tells Morgan that the age of the witch is over, as he rips her shirt and slaps her down. Adonis gets free and tries to help, but he just gets held down again. The Emperor gets annoyed at his outburst, so he orders his men to kill him, but Morgan bows down to the Emperor, begging him to spare Adonis since he's a human. She claims she kidnapped him and raised him as her slave, so there's no reason to kill him. She tells the Emperor to just take her life, and Adonis can't believe what she's saying. Adonis keeps trying to use his magic, but it's no use. The Emperor prepares to finish her off, and she thanks Adonis for everything, remembering how they first met, and the time and the happiness that they shared together. She tells him she loves him, but the Emperor shoots her, and she gets shredded by the firing squad. Adonis watches in horror, as the Emperor proceeds to display Morgan's head to the people. Ten years later, in one of the Empire's detention facilities, we see two women fighting over a loaf of bread, but a girl named Doro breaks them up, offering to give them her share. 
The woman quickly snatches it, but Doro's friend Anna wonders if she'll be okay without food. Doro shows off how much energy she has, so she tells her not to worry. Anna can't believe Doro can still help others in their situation. She thinks about how even though the witches were exterminated and their technology keeps advancing, there has still been endless war. We learn that they are prisoners of war, but Doro tries to cheer her friend up with a puppet show. The guards suddenly come in, calling for a prisoner with the number 218. The girls know that the people who get called never come back, and we see they are looking for Anna. The guard demands them to come out, and Doro ends up stepping forward. Anna cries as she realizes what Doro did for her. Doro is taken to the warden, and we learn that the girls are being sold as slaves. She can't believe her fate, and the warden takes a selfie with her for his record. Doro suddenly bites his finger, and she manages to escape. We see that she also took his phone, and she tries to use it to open all the other cells, but the phone requires the warden's voice to work. She does her best impression of the warden, and it actually works, opening all of the cells. She tells everyone to run, and chaos ensues. She tries to find a way out, but ends up in a strange room. She's caught by one of the guards, but the containment unit in the middle also starts to unlock, revealing a person who was completely sealed. The man suddenly breaks free, and we see that it's Adonis. The guards start to panic seeing him get free, but he instantly jumps onto one of them, taking them out straight away. The other guard tries to shoot him, but he parries it and shoots the guard with his own gun. Doro gets scared as he approaches her. He shoots her, but he ends up setting her free. The guards panic as they try to control the situation, and we see that at the National Security Bureau or NSB, the director Yamato receives a report about this. He orders his executive Ika to deal with it, and he happily agrees, but Yamato's sister Yuki isn't happy with his carefree attitude, reminding him that they are the cornerstone for maintaining order in the empire. But Yamato tells her it's okay, reminding her that there's a reason that he's an executive. Back at the prison, the warden panics as he finds that Adonis has gotten free. He wonders how Doro could have opened his chamber, because even his fawn shouldn't have had the clearance to free him, and to make matters worse, it seems that Adonis's magic pen has also gone missing. We see Adonis outside, and he tries out his magic for the first time in 10 years. He shoots his gun, summoning an enormous bullet, which crashes into a building, and he prepares to wipe out everyone in the city. We see Ika cleaning things up at the prison, but he reports that he didn't find Adonis. He hears about the building that was attacked, so he prepares to head over, but he takes out the warden first. We see Doro also manages to get out, but seeing the damage Adonis has caused, she thinks it's her fault that she set him free. As he walks through the street, Adonis thinks about how his master wouldn't want him to get revenge, but he just can't let go of what happened. He summons a giant robot, and he starts going on a rampage. We see an officer receiving a report about this, but he just thinks he's being pranked. A car suddenly crashes through the wall, and the driver is shocked by what he saw. The officer thinks the man is high, but when he looks outside, he sees what's going on. We see Yamato and Yuki observing from a distance, and they confirm that Adonis is behind the attack. Yamato thinks they can just use their magic suppression device to stop him, but he's reminded that it hasn't been used in 10 years, so they aren't sure if it will still work properly. A state of emergency is declared, and we see tanks being deployed. They fire at the giant, but their shots seem to just miss. Adonis retaliates by smashing a building and throwing debris at his enemies. We learn that for a human to use magic, writing style summoning magic is the only way. It works by understanding and systemizing the mechanisms of magic, and even while he was sealed away, he was able to practice it in his mind, so it didn't matter that he was sealed away for 10 years. He thinks that all the citizens who benefited from his master's death are just as guilty, so he plans on wiping out the whole country. He summons two Gatling guns, and he starts mauling everyone down, but despite getting his revenge, it doesn't feel quite right, and he starts to cry. Ika spots that Adonis is in the giant's hand, and the NSB deploys its jets. They bomb him with missiles, and we see the civilians getting caught in the crossfire. A massive building is about to fall onto a child, but Doro saves him just in time. She apologizes for everything that's happened, but she promises to make things right. Meanwhile at the palace, we see the emperor in bed, 
and we learn he is suffering from an incurable illness. He wonders if it's a curse from God, but he doesn't repent for what he did, thinking that getting rid of the witches was a necessary thing to do for the sake of the human race. We see Adonis engaging against the soldiers on the ground, but his magic is just too strong, and he wipes them all out. He is about to finish off the last soldier, but Doro suddenly begs him to stop, thinking he has done enough, saying she doesn't want to see any more innocent people die. But this just pisses him off. He thinks about how he let her go because she was from a different country, but thinks he should just exterminate everyone. Doro tells him that Morgan wouldn't want to see him like this, but he tells her not to use his master's name. He wonders if the humans are just using her as a distraction, remembering how they like to fight dirty, but Doro reveals that she's a witch. Adonis doesn't believe that witches still exist, but she swears that it's true, saying some of them survived. Adonis wonders why they didn't try to save his master, but she says they were desperate to get away themselves. Adonis doesn't want to hear her apologies, but she mentions that they can bring her back to life. Adonis finds this hard to believe, but Doro says she infiltrated the country to find him, so that they could use his memories to bring his master back. Adonis prepares to finish her off, but looking at her face, he's reminded of his master. He breaks down in tears, and Doro tells him he's no longer alone, but she suddenly gets shot, and Ika can't believe that he missed Adonis. In a flashback, we see a burning village, where Dora watches as the soldiers eliminate the witches. The witch Mia, reveals that the humans attacked without warning, and Dora wonders why they are doing this, because the witches didn't do anything to deserve this. Mia knows that they can't fight back, because a device is preventing them from using magic, so she tells Doro to escape, and inform the leader Ophelia about the incident. She advises Doro to follow the Star of Revelation, saying it will lead her to Ophelia's mansion. Mia tells her to run as fast as she can, so she dashes away, fleeing from the village, as the soldiers surround Mia. Back in the present, Doro is mortally wounded, but Adonis tells her to hold on, asking her how he can revive Morgan. She gives him a valuable piece of information, but the soldiers suddenly start firing at them, ending Doro's life. Adonis realizes that he's surrounded, and the soldiers open fire, but his magic stops the bullets in mid-air, and he sends them back at the soldiers. Ika tries to snipe Adonis, but he controls the bullet, making it enormous, before sending it back to Ika, killing him in an instant. Meanwhile, Yuki makes her way to the magic suppressing device, thinking about activating it to defeat Adonis, but the director Theta stops her, telling her that they can't activate the device. Yuki demands an explanation, so Theta calls Yamato, telling him that there is something strange about the device. She reveals that it releases certain particles that are linked to the development of a deadly disease, which kills the cells in the human body, explaining why the soldiers involved in the witch hunt suffered terrible fates. She goes on to explain that the natural environment has changed after the witches were eliminated, so the atmosphere that gets rid of the particles is now gone, making the device even deadlier than it was before. Theta reminds Yamato that the Emperor was also exposed to this device, explaining why he is now suffering from an incurable disease. Yamato observes Adonis as he continues his rampage, while Theta tells Yuki to leave, but she rushes to the device instead, knowing that Adonis is a threat to everyone. Theta orders everyone to retreat, as she chases after Yuki, telling her not to activate it, but she still proceeds to do so. Adonis suddenly drops his pen, and Yamato receives a call from Theta, who tells him that everything is fine, because she has already disabled the device. He is worried about Yuki, but Theta tells him to deal with Adonis, because they can't defeat him if he starts using magic again, reminding him that they can't lose, because the Empire is supposed to be invincible. So he orders the soldiers to charge, as Adonis tries to retrieve his pen. The soldiers prepare to fire, but a girl rushes forward, as a nearby building collapses, obstructing their line of vision. The girl prepares to execute Adonis, who embraces his fate, happy that he will finally be with Morgan again. She manages to behead him, and as the dust settles, she presents his head to the soldiers, who are happy that the threat has finally been dealt with. Everyone celebrates the victory, but Yamato tells them that it's too early to celebrate, because they still need to collect Adonis's body, and rescue the victims in the area. He looks at the soldier who killed Adonis, as an official informs him that she is a new recruit, saying he will look into her background, but Yamato tells him not to bother, ordering him to look for Yuki instead. 
Thea and Yuki receive medical attention, as the Emperor delivers a speech, telling everyone that Adonis caused the disaster, leading to the deaths of many. He reveals that they don't know how Adonis can use magic, because he is just a human being, and the Emperor feels guilty for allowing him to live for so long. But the Emperor tells everyone not to worry, saying their empire is the greatest, because it has acquired the power of science, along with the best soldiers in the world. We see a girl named Ari, who has just finished watching the Emperor's speech. The instructor informs everyone that students died because of the incident, but they will still push through with the exams. One of the students wonders why Adonis sided with the witches despite being a human, and the instructor thinks that he must have been brainwashed. After class, Ari is approached by another girl, who says she knows what happened, but Ari tells her that it was a normal reaction to the situation. Ari visits the place where the incident occurred, and she pays respect to the dead, revealing that she is angry at the government for not protecting its citizens. She apologizes to her boyfriend, thinking he must really hate her, because she had the chance to save him when Adonis went on a rampage. But when she saw the giant robot, she immediately ran away, and he ended up getting crushed. She hates herself for abandoning him, but she looks at the pictures of Adonis, revealing that she finds him attractive. But at that moment, Ari realizes that the deputy director Oz is watching her. She knows that he is working with the government, but he tells her not to worry, because he won't report her. However, after she leaves, he calls his subordinate Charmy, telling her that Ari has been influenced by the terrorists, so they need to arrest her for treason. A soldier informs him that they've completed the final check in the disaster area, and as they are about to head back, Charmy informs him that an unbelievable analysis came in, revealing that Adonis's body was fake, so he might still be alive. We see Adonis in great pain, as he gets treated by some witches. They think the transfer was too much for a human to handle, but Ophelia appears and calms his mind with her magic. He remembers what happened, and we see that the soldier created a copy of him, revealing that she is actually Doro's friend Anna. Adonis questions who she is, but she tells him that helping him escape is the top priority. He is suddenly sealed into a ball and he is flown away. Adonis falls to the ground, but Ophelia embraces him, thanking him for fighting for them. Adonis demands to know where he is, and Ophelia reveals he is in the Nation of Witches. The next day, he is shown around the place, and we see the witches living peaceful lives. He is taken to see Ophelia, and Adonis wants to walk by himself, but Ophelia tells him his body was put under great stress to get there. He is greeted as Morgan's apprentice, but Adonis wonders how she knew his master. Ophelia reveals that every witch in their nation knows her, because she was one of the strongest and most kind witches. But Ophelia reveals she was exiled from the nation, and Adonis realizes it was because she took a human as her apprentice. Ophelia explains that their magic is seen as their gift from God, so they are forbidden from sharing it with humans. Adonis tells her to get to her point, and Ophelia reveals his quill. Adonis gets up, immediately demanding that she give it back to him. Ophelia comments on its craftsmanship, knowing that only Morgan could have made such an item, but she gives it back to him. Adonis wonders if it's really possible to bring back his master, and Ophelia tells him that witches don't lie. Adonis is relieved to hear this, but he suddenly sees the earth above him. He wonders what's going on, and we learn that the witches established their nation on the moon ten years ago. Adonis is shown the sacred Mito tree, which is how witches are born or regenerated. Ophelia explains that it's the last surviving tree that they brought from Earth, before the humans destroyed the rest. Adonis is intrigued as he observes one of the fruits, thinking Morgan could be inside, but Ophelia tells him it will require his help to become Morgan. She explains that magic is the act of giving their thoughts a physical form, and his writing style summoning magic is the very essence of this, allowing him to be able to give a form to anything he can think of. She tells him that he can seal the memories of his master into the fruit, and it will be the key to her resurrection. Ophelia tells him to think about it, and call her when he's ready. We see Adonis thinking about his master, when Anna suddenly approaches him. Adonis wonders what she wants, but Anna cries over losing Doro just to save him. Adonis says it's not his problem, and he starts walking away. Anna thinks he is selfish, only thinking about resurrecting his master, and she wonders why they risked their lives for someone like him, but Adonis knows the truth, knowing that the witches plan on using him and his master. Anna is shocked hearing this, 
but Adonis tells her not to play dumb, revealing that in Doro's final moments, she warned him about the witch's intentions. He notes that witches are able to live in extreme environments without any protective gear, and the fact that they created such a grand facility was so they could have a cage to keep humans. He knows they plan on kidnapping slaves and children using their transfer ability and teaching them the writing style magic so they can fight for the witches. He knows that the witches are on the verge of extinction, so they must be looking for ways to get more soldiers. Only Morgan is able to make the quills, so they are trying to resurrect her so she can make more. Anna wonders what he plans to do, begging him to help them. Adonis notes that he plans on resurrecting his master regardless, but decides he will follow her will, so if she rejects them, he would consider the witches as enemies. The time of the ritual arrives, and Adonis uses his magic to send his memories into the fruit. He recalls the time he spent with her, thinking about how much he loves her. There's a blinding light as the ritual completes, but it's Doro who emerges from the fruit. We learn that Adonis decided not to resurrect Morgan because he didn't want her to suffer, thinking the world isn't a place for someone as good as her. Doro wakes up, realizing she is in the nation of witches, and she wonders what she's doing there. Adonis gives her clothes, telling her to wear it, as he tells her that she saved his life, so he wanted to repay the favor. Ophelia condemns his action, reminding him that they went out of their way to help him, so she wonders why he ruined all of their efforts. She thinks that Doro manipulated him into doing this, but he tells Ophelia that he made the decision himself. She concludes that he isn't on their side, but at that moment, she realizes that they are surrounded by portals, as Adonis reveals that he still has the human's tracking device on him. He destroys it, causing an explosion, which burns the sacred tree. Yamato appears, and the soldiers surround the witches, as a witch tries to save the tree, but a soldier executes her. The witches realize that they're in danger, so one of them uses enhancement magic, equipping the witches with a suit of armor. Adonis confronts Yamato, dodging his attack, and using magic to steal his gun. Adonis shoots him, knocking him down, so he deploys his defensive gear, allowing him to survive, as Adonis continues to shoot him. But Doro stops Adonis, so he wonders what she wants. The witches use their magic, killing the soldiers, and Ophelia casts her ultimate spell, sending the soldiers to the skies. They try to shoot her, but the bullets avoid her, as the soldiers are gathered in one spot, where they are instantly crushed to death. She thinks they have secured victory, but she realizes that more soldiers have arrived, thinking the humans are trying to outnumber them. We see the human officials watching the battle in the conference room, and we learn that Theta only has months left to live, because she was exposed to the magic suppressing device. Director Dynasma questions her, wondering how the witches survived, so she shows him a picture, which reveals that the witches captured a human satellite to reach the moon. She reveals that she just discovered this, explaining that the structure built on the moon was hidden by magical camouflage. But Dynasma admonishes her, telling her that her agency receives a massive budget from the government, so they shouldn't allow something like this to happen. He reminds her that the people already believe that the war with the witches is over, so her failure could cost more than just her life. But Director Shiro tells him not to worry, saying they can solve the problem. We see Yuki in a stasis chamber, as Yamato remembers the time they spent together. He recalls how Theta told him to let her agency handle Yuki, promising that she will be saved, but he starts to fear the worst. We return to the battle, as he blames Adonis for what happened to Yuki. He gets back up, and he punches Adonis, knocking him down. Yamato goes berserk, and he charges up for a powerful attack, as he thinks about how Adonis ruined his dream to live a peaceful life with Yuki. He unleashes his ultimate skill, which covers the entire area, instantly slicing the witches in half, including Ophelia, but Adonis manages to dodge it. Doro has also been sliced in half, but Anna uses duplication magic to save her, telling her how much she loves her, but we see that Anna has also been killed. So Doro mourns her death, wishing for all the violence to stop. Adonis continues his battle with Yamato, covering his arms with armor, and using it to deliver a devastating blow, which shatters Yamato's sword, and pierces through his chest. Adonis is about to finish him off, but he blocks it, using his armor to heal his body and repair his sword. He manages to push Adonis back, as the witches despair, thinking they're about to go extinct, because the sacred tree has been destroyed, so no witches will ever be born again. 
They know that they are the last witches in the world, so they are determined to survive, but the soldiers continue to pursue them. Yamato charges in, and he manages to impale Adonis, but he realizes that Adonis is holding onto his pen, as the massive sword Calibran appears, cutting off Yamato's arm. He uses his armor to stop the bleeding, as Adonis observes that they have the same look in their eyes, thinking Yamato also wants revenge. The soldiers exterminate the witches, as Yamato prepares to kill Adonis, telling him to die with the witches. But Dora orders Yamato to stop, and he realizes that he can't move his body. We learn that Doro has the power of love, which allows her to manipulate men to do her bidding. Yamato knows that the spell is dangerous, so he tries to attack her, but he struggles to move his body. Adonis tells her to kill Yamato, but she implores him to stop the fighting instead, saying she will dispel her magic if he promises to leave them alone. Adonis becomes angry, reminding her that Yamato killed Anna, and he tells her that they can't spare the soldiers, because they have killed so many witches. Yamato manages to resist her spell, and he starts pummeling her, telling her that witches bring chaos to the world, so they can't be allowed to exist. He reminds her that Adonis went on a rampage, leading to the deaths of countless people, and he blames the witches for this, knowing this wouldn't have happened if Adonis didn't learn magic. But she tells him that he has also killed countless people, reminding him about the witches he killed during his missions. She wonders why he's doing this, reminding him that witches and humans used to be friends, and she tries to convince him to end the conflict. She uses her spell, and he tries to overcome it, but he ultimately fails, saying he will order his forces to retreat, but Adonis kills him, slicing off his head. Adonis thinks that Doro's magic is useful, so he invites her to join him in his quest to destroy humanity. We cut to the royal palace, where the emperor receives a report that Yamato is winning against the witches. He learns that Adonis is also in the battle, and he celebrates, saying they must kill everyone on the moon. He tells his wife to praise him, because he has finally killed the witches, and everyone applauds him, but the soldier thinks that he has gone mad. The soldier notices that the emperor is acting strange, and his wife orders him to die, so he starts walking away, saying he's willing to die to make his wife happy. He climbs the wall, and the soldier tells him to stop, but he reminds the soldier that he's the emperor, saying he was able to make the empire the strongest in the world. He says that he did everything because he loves his wife, and he falls off the building, as his wife dispels her love magic. We see that he has been impaled, and the soldier calls for backup, realizing she's a witch, but she uses her spell on him, so he tells the others that the emperor just fell to his death. Shiro is working for her, and she tells him to get rid of women, because her magic doesn't work on them. He tells her that she will rule the world, but she reveals that she doesn't care about that. We learn she is the witch Gretch, who has abandoned her notions of hypocrisy, earning her title as the witch of the unknown. We return to the moon, where Doro refuses to join Adonis. He tells her not to dispel our magic, as he makes his way to the soldiers who can't move. He slaughters all of them, as she thinks about stopping him using her magic, and he dares her to do it, but she doesn't do anything. The soldiers beg for their lives, and Doro tells him that killing them won't change anything, saying it will only inspire other people to seek revenge. She tells him that she doesn't want to see people die anymore, begging him to stop, but he kills the soldiers anyway. He makes his way to Yamato's head, and he uses voice imitation magic. At the headquarters, we see the people panicking, because the cameras on the moon have been destroyed, so they can't see anything. They start to fear the worst, but they receive a call from Yamato, telling them that they have won the battle, and the witches on the moon have been wiped out. But he tells them that the battle was fierce, so he lost all of his men, saying he's the only survivor. Theta knows that Yamato isn't the one talking to them, and we see Adonis wearing Yamato's face, as he orders them to return him to Earth. Ophelia realizes that this is what he wanted from the start, and he's willing to sacrifice the witches to achieve his goal. He tells Doro to join him, but she slaps him, saying Morgan would be ashamed to see what he has become. They are about to be teleported to Earth, as Ophelia curses Adonis, hoping God would punish him for his crimes. The people in the headquarters think that they are about to see Yamato, but Theta knows the truth, and she is determined to avenge him. So she readies her men, and after the teleport sequence, she orders them to fire. But they realize that Adonis didn't appear at their location, because the transfer coordinates were changed. 
we see Adonis and Doro in the middle of the desert, and we learn that before they were teleported away, Adonis was able to change the transfer coordinates. He is determined to destroy the Empire, saying they should start by gathering information and supplies. But Doro refuses to go with him, saying she wants to return to the moon. He tells her that the witches are dead, and he uses a spell to display her memories, reminding her that she tried to reconcile with the soldiers who killed the witches. He tells her that she's crazy, but she explains that she always wanted to see him, because he's a human trained by a witch, so she thought that he could serve as the bridge between the humans and witches. She wonders how far he'll go for his revenge, telling him that the humans will never forgive him, so the fighting will never end. But he refuses to listen to her, saying Morgan's life is more precious than all of humanity, so he is willing to kill everyone to avenge her. She reminds him that he got the witches killed, but he doesn't care, saying he summoned the humans to the moon, so that he can return to Earth, and the witches proved to be useful in the end. Doro becomes upset, telling him not to disparage the witches, but he tells her not to be a hypocrite, reminding her that she is willing to forgive the people who killed her friends. She believes that revenge won't solve anything, but he doesn't care, telling her that he has nothing to lose. He starts walking away, but she lunges at him, telling him that he still has the life that Morgan protected, so he shouldn't let the world change him. She tells him that if he continues with his revenge, he might end up like the humans he wants to kill, but he tells her that she doesn't get it, saying revenge is the proof that Morgan lived with him, and he is afraid that she will be forgotten if he stops seeking revenge. Doro starts to understand him, but she realizes that he is mortally wounded, and we see that they have been spotted by a group of bikers. Their leader Punch, decides to take them in, and after some time, Adonis wakes up in a room. He recalls that before he lost consciousness, Doro begged the bikers to save him, so he concludes that he is at their hideout. Punch invites him for a drink, saying it will help him recover, but he refuses to drink with him. He asks Punch about Doro, so he shows Adonis around the place, revealing that they're in the wastelands, where the people who have escaped from the kingdom are living their lives as vagrants. He hears Doro screaming, as a crowd gathers around her, and Punch explains that they don't usually see young women, so Adonis thinks she's in trouble. He rushes to her location, but he realizes that she's just riding a bike, and she is struggling to control it. She sees Adonis, and she gives him a symbol of her apology, saying she is sorry for all the things she said, but he just throws them away. That evening, the men drink together, and Doro serves them, allowing them to enjoy the party. Adonis watches them from a distance, as a group of men wonder if she is his girlfriend. She denies this, saying they are just traveling the world, but the men laugh at her, because they don't believe her. They suddenly collapse, and Adonis reveals that he put something in their drinks. Doro wonders if he poisoned them, but he tells her that he just modified the alcohol's formula to turn it into a tranquilizer, wondering why she didn't notice this, because she's supposed to be a witch. He pulls out a gun, but she tells him not to kill the men, because they are good people, reminding him that they are the ones who saved him. He tells her that he doesn't care, but he decides not to kill them, because they're not worth killing. He tells her that he doesn't need her help, thinking they are incompatible because of her attitude but she tells him that she's trying to blend in with the humans, so she's trying to pretend that she's okay, but she still hasn't recovered from what happened. However, he tells her not to end up like him, and he starts walking away. After some time, Punch talks to her, thinking Adonis is a bad person, but she recalls that Adonis didn't want her to end up like him, so she thinks that he is actually a kind person. Punch reveals that he knows Adonis, revealing that he was about to die in the desert, when Morgan used ice magic and gave him water to drink. He says that man can achieve true happiness when he finds something worth fighting for, telling Doro that she may be right about revenge, but the world is so relative that it's hard to tell right from wrong. She says that she doesn't want Adonis to die, so Punch tells her to go after him. While walking in the desert, Adonis sees a bike approaching, thinking he's being pursued, so he prepares for battle. But he realizes that it's just Doro, and she dashes past him, telling him that she has decided to join him. Adonis wonders why she's not stopping, and it turns out that she doesn't know how to hit the brakes, so she starts screaming for help, as Adonis runs after her, thinking she might get herself killed. Back in the city, a memorial is held for the Emperor, noting all of his accomplishments throughout his reign. The people watch on eagerly as the next ruler of the Empire is announced, and it's none other than the Queen. She puts on a show for the people, and as she sings for them, 
We see them all being enchanted by her power. Meanwhile, in a distant place, we see a group of people as they watch the broadcast, but they are aware of her identity as the Witch Gretch, finding her actions of exterminating her own people and becoming queen, even crazier than predicted. Everyone applauds her after her performance, and we see Shiro wishing he could have been there, but notes that his mission comes first. He has lost the signal tracking Adonis, so he prepares to find him the old-fashioned way. We see Adonis riding with Doro, as he wonders what she plans to do, because he has no intention to give up on his revenge. Doro notes that there are good people in the world, like Punch and his friends, so she hopes he can spare them. However, Adonis refuses, warning her not to get in his way. They arrive at a small town called Sandland, but find that it's completely abandoned. Adonis prepares to look around, telling Doro to stay behind, but she begs to go with him. He asks about her bag, and she reveals it contains supplies from Punch, like food, bandages and medicine. She takes out the head of a snowman, pushing the button on its head, and it creates an instant tent, but Adonis isn't impressed and continues on his way. As they look around, Adonis sees no signs of a struggle, so he wonders where everyone went. They arrive at the police station, but when they look inside, Dora was scared by a rat, causing a scene, as she steps into the floor. Adonis warns her not to be so noisy, but a man suddenly appears behind her, asking if she needs help. Doro becomes terrified thinking it's a ghost, but Adonis recognizes it as just a hologram. They continue exploring, and they come across the jail cells. They hear a song coming from one of them, and they find a man playing the guitar. Doro calls out to get his attention, and the man is shocked to see another person in the town. They explain they are just travelers, and Adonis wonders why he's the only person around. The man thinks it's because he's a prisoner, and Adonis decides to just leave him alone, saying they have no business there, but the man notes that that's exactly what everyone in the town said before they all left, saying that after the witches were wiped out, and people gained technology, the town was deemed too old-fashioned. Adonis asks if there's a metropolis nearby, and the man tells him that the city of Mamuda is to the east. Adonis prepares to head on his way, but Dora worries about the man starving. She wants to free him, but Adonis says it's none of their business. She suggests giving him the food they got from Punch, but Adonis notes that the cell wasn't even locked, and the man is there with his wife to have peace. He assures his wife that they are gone, and we learn she was locked up because she was accused of being a witch. He couldn't protect her at the time, but he promises to stay with her. Adonis thinks they should leave them in peace, and he heads off for Mamuda. But when they arrive, Doro notes that it appears to be abandoned. They see a woman in the middle of the road, and Doro approaches her, wondering if she's okay. But Adonis tells her to be careful, saying the woman is not human. We learn that she's an android, and she scans Doro's body, realizing she isn't a good source of pleasure. But the android is desperate for gratification, so she lunges at Doro. But Adonis shoots her, recognizing her as a Madoa, a doll created to satisfy men. He hears voices coming from a building, realizing there are more Madoas, so he prepares to take them on, telling Doro to wait for him, as he warns her not to act without his permission. But as she looks around the area, she sees a pile of Madoas, causing her to freak out. He enters the building, using enlightened magic to illuminate the corridor, but we see that she has decided to follow him, thinking he shouldn't mind if he sees her, because he's not really a bad person. But she recalls that he abandoned her in the past, and he even attacked her, so she starts to question her decision. At that moment, he approaches her, threatening to kill her, because he thinks she isn't taking him seriously, but she immediately apologizes, telling him that it would be safer for them to stick together, and he sees her point, so he allows her to go with him. They hear the sound coming from the door, and he notes that it smells like death. They enter the room, and they see Madoa's making love to a corpse, as Adonis notes that they were made in the Empire. They tell him that they wanted someone to love them, and they wonder why they were programmed to pleasure men, saying they are sick of the lives they're living. They beg him to put them out of their misery, so he shoots them dead, and they thank him for setting them free. He walks around Mamuda, and he sees chains on the ground, recognizing it as the restraints used on the slaves of the Empire. He thinks that the men needed money to buy the Madolas from the Empire, so they offered their wives and daughters in exchange, turning them into slaves. Because of this, Mamuda ran out of women, and the men couldn't produce the next generation, causing the state to fall into ruin. 
he approaches the pile of medollas and he configures a device, revealing that he is planning to use EMP to put them to rest. Doro thinks he would be doing them a favor, wondering if they will experience pain. But he explains that they will just feel a small shock as he uses his magic on the device, creating a sound wave, which gives them a peaceful death. Meanwhile, we see ninjas watching Adonis, recognizing him as Morgan's apprentice, and they know about his exploits, knowing he's an enemy of the Empire. We learn they are working for another emperor named Sura, and their goal is to capture him, but as they are about to approach him, Shiro blocks their path, so they try to take him down. We cut to Doro, as she buries the Medolas, but Adonis tells her that her rituals won't benefit them, saying she should honor them by making the humans suffer. He sees a grave for the witches on the moon, and Doro says they died because of him, so he wonders why she chose to travel with him. But she explains that she doesn't blame him, knowing the witches were trying to use him to resurrect Morgan, so she thinks that they were the ones who betrayed him. Adonis and Doro are about to return to their bike, but they are surprised to see Shiro waiting for them. He destroys the bike, and we see that he has killed the ninjas, as he tells Adonis that he's there to eliminate him. We learn that his assistant Charmy was able to track their coordinates with the help of the intelligence team. Adonis inquires about the ninjas, so Shiro tells him that he doesn't know them, and he starts playing with their heads. Doro tells him to stop, but he grabs onto her, and Adonis pulls her away, trying to use magic, but before he could finish casting his spell, Shiro punches him away. He tries to shoot Shiro, but he manages to dodge the bullets as he charges at Adonis. Adonis thinks he must be a cyborg because his reaction speed is insane. Adonis tries firing a giant bullet, but Shiro still manages to evade it and he charges at Adonis, so Doro uses her love spell, telling him to stop. Adonis thinks it's working, but Shiro laughs, saying he is surprised to see her magic because it's similar to the one the Empress is using. He starts moving freely as Doro wonders why her magic isn't working and he removes his shirt, revealing that he's already under the Empress's spell. He reveals his secret weapon and he releases robotic hands as Adonis tells Doro to stand back because her magic doesn't work on him, saying she won't be able to do anything during the fight. But he remembers the Emperor, who told Morgan that witches are nothing without their magic, so Adonis thinks that he is being cruel. But Doro is determined to help him, saying she wants to join him until the end. He is impressed by her resolve, so he uses his magic, creating a sword for her to use, and giving himself some armor. He explains that the sword is surrounded by a magical energy, and it can pierce through steel, but she will need to learn basic sword skills to use it effectively. Shiro commands the hands to attack, and they surround Adonis and Doro, but Adonis is able to destroy them, as he notes that they lack power, but their numbers are limitless. He sees Doro struggling, and she is about to get overwhelmed, but he protects her, as Shiro removes his limiter, increasing the power of his hands. They try to attack Adonis, but he casts a spell, summoning magical tentacles to destroy them. The tentacles transform into a cannonball, and it makes its way to Shiro, as Charmy advises him to avoid it, thinking it's a threat to him, but he recalls his robotic hands, allowing him to unleash his full power. He struggles against the cannonball, but he goes all out, and he manages to stop it. But at that moment, Adonis launches a surprise attack, so he summons his robotic hands, using them to stop Adonis. But Doro charges in, and Shiro realizes that he's completely defenseless. She sees an opening, but she doesn't want to kill him, so she aims for his legs, and he survives the attack, telling her that she should have aimed for his heart. Adonis rushes in, but he punches them away, causing Doro to cough up blood. He tells her that she almost had him, but Adonis uses magic to restrain him, trying to strangle him to death. But Shiro fights back with his hands, and Adonis struggles to maintain his spell, knowing it will vanish if he stops riding. Doro realizes that she needs to kill Shiro to save Adonis, but a hand pulls her away, and Adonis ends up getting overwhelmed. Shiro breaks free, and he prepares to gouge Doro's eyes out, as Adonis begs him to stop. Doro recalls the moments she spent with Adonis, realizing that she will never see him again. Shiro proceeds to blind her, and Adonis recalls how he wasn't able to do anything when Morgan was killed. He is determined to save her, and he releases his armor, allowing him to break free. He rushes to get to her, but Shiro removes her eyes, and she falls to the ground. 
She tells Adonis that she can't see anything, and he notices that she's bleeding profusely, so he's afraid that she will run out of blood. Shiro starts playing with her eyes, as Adonis tells him to give them back, but he crushes them instead. Adonis becomes enraged, preparing to cast a spell, but Shiro attacks him, kicking his pen away. He grabs onto Shiro, smashing him into the wall, and he retrieves his pen, as Shiro orders his arms to attack. Adonis uses a reversal spell, which stops the arms, and causing them to return to Shiro, but he takes to the sky, as they are destroyed in an explosion. He notices that Adonis has disappeared, and we see him hiding with Doro, using a robotic arm to cauterize her wound. He manages to stop the bleeding, as she thanks him for saving her, saying she wants to live a peaceful life, but she knows that it's impossible, because the Empire is hunting them down. She reminds him of Morgan, and he wonders why he can't protect the people close to him. We see Shiro looking for Adonis, and he appears with his giant robot, trying to attack Shiro, but he manages to escape. Adonis tells him to call his empress, threatening to remove her eyes, and this makes him upset, so he charges at Adonis, and they start fighting. But the giant robot crumbles, and Adonis gets pushed back. Shiro pursues him, but he summons his armor, and he tries to fight back, but Shiro takes him down. He is about to cast a spell, but Shiro kicks him away, telling him that it takes too long for him to write a spell, and this makes him vulnerable to attacks. Shiro gathers his arms, and they take the form of a massive fist, which he uses to attack Adonis. We cut to Doro, as she looks for Adonis, but she can't see anything. She hears him calling out to her, so she thinks that he won the fight, but she realizes that Shiro was just imitating his voice. He tells her to escape, but Shiro throws him away, and gives him a savage beatdown. She hears him struggling, so she begs Shiro to stop, but he restrains her, and he starts beating her up. He reveals that she reminds him of the Empress, so he thinks about changing her face. We learn that when Shiro met the Empress, he immediately knew that they were made for each other, and he willingly became her love slave. He tells Doro that the world doesn't need her, seeing her as a copy of the Empress, and he threatens to kill her, saying he will do the same for Adonis. But she begs him to spare Adonis, saying he only went on a rampage because the witches were hunted down, and she wanted to end the war, but she's starting to understand why he's hungry for revenge. Shiro proceeds to assault her, telling her that he doesn't care what she says, because he just wants to kill Adonis. But Adonis tells her to use the love magic on him, saying he is willing to become her puppet, because he thinks that it's the only way for them to win. She reluctantly agrees to this, and she uses her magic, causing a pillar of light to appear, as Adonis receives a power-up. He attacks Shiro, pushing him back, and we see that his hand is broken, but he keeps moving despite his injuries. In a flashback, we learn that the witches shun Doro, because they look down on her ability, saying the ability to control men is disgusting. Ophelia advises her to keep her magic a secret, thinking it will destroy the reputation of witches, and because of this, she's always holding back, not wanting to use her love spell. We return to the present, as Adonis tells her that he finally understands her, saying she cares too much about everything. But he tells her not to worry about him, because he will never fall in love with her. So she uses her magic, turning him into her puppet, as she tells him that he's invincible, because his body has broken the limits, and his magic power can no longer be measured. Shiro senses his powers, seeing him as a major threat, so he decides to retreat, but Adonis summons a quill blade, and he manages to land a hit, as he tells Doro that he is willing to risk his life to protect her. Shiro jumps on his hands to get away, but Adonis catches up to him, grabbing his head and throwing him through multiple buildings. Shiro can't believe he's so strong, and Adonis appears next to him, crushing his arm and smashing him into the ground. Shiro begs for mercy, but Adonis uses his magic, opening a portal up in the sky. Doro notices that it's snowing, and Adonis reveals it's a spell that Morgan once used. We learn he promised he would only use it for protecting another person, and Shiro tries to stop him, shooting all of his hands to attack, but Adonis freezes them all in an instant, and blows them all away. Shiro tells Doro to stop Adonis, because he won't survive his own magic, but she uses her powers of suggestion to warm him up. Shiro rushes at them, but Adonis completes his spell, activating his absolute zero which freezes the whole area, and Shiro becomes completely frozen. Together with Doro's powers, the spell expands, 
and we see that even in the desert, Punch and the others can feel the cold. Punch tells everyone to take cover, and the camp is soon covered by a snowstorm. Meanwhile at the bureau, their drones have been destroyed, and they detect the sudden drop in temperature, so they switch to their satellite image, but they're shocked when they see the huge storm covering the area. Back at the desert camp, they wonder what's going on, because they shouldn't have any snow there. We see Morgan appear before Adonis, and she is happy to see he kept his promise to use his magic to protect another. She fades away into the sky, and we see Adonis protect Adoro by giving her armor. Adonis reaches his limit and collapses, so Adoro releases her love spell, and she's relieved to hear that he's still alive. We see that Shiro also survived, and he notes that they remind him of the Empress and Emperor when they were young. He apologizes for failing to acquire the incantation for the Empress, shattering into pieces, and Doro wonders what he's talking about. We see the Empress running through the city, and everyone is excited to see her. She makes it back to the palace, but she's told that she should bring guards when she goes out, but she says she isn't worried since everyone loves her. She asks if they have gotten a response from the other nations, saying that if they don't listen to her, she plans to declare war. Meanwhile, we see Doro and Adonis. Doro feels bad that when she used her love spell on him, she used his love for Morgan and directed it to herself, which was how he was so strong. But Adonis tells her not to worry, since he was the one who told her to use the spell on him, noting that he couldn't have defeated Shiro without it. Adonis tells her to lift up her bangs, and she apologizes for looking ugly. Adonis notes how she has said sorry 15 times, and he says that he is finally starting to understand her. He thinks that although she's clumsy and a wuss, her kindness is real. He compares her with Morgan, and he takes back calling her a hypocrite, asking her to share her kindness with him. He wraps her eyes, and she notes how it feels like he's holding her, but Adonis bonks her, saying that Morgan is the only one for him. They prepare to head off, but Doro slips on the ice, so Adonis takes her hand to guide her, saying that a certain witch once told him they should help each other. He says that he still plans on getting revenge, and Doro has changed her mind, saying that getting revenge isn't wrong, but we see that Yuki is still alive, and she swears to get revenge for her brother. But that's where this video ends. Remember to like, and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.